Hey folks, Matt Dallas here. And right now, there is no better gift than a portable power bank from Octopod. A power bank is essentially a portable phone charger. Take it with you to football games, camping trips, school, or anywhere you want to keep your device powered where you're not going to be near an outlet. Octopod products make a great gift for anyone in your family. Visit octo-pod.com slash NGC. Once again, that is O-C-T-O-P-O-D.com slash NGC to buy your power bank today. In a world where political correctness, liberal indoctrination, and a bought and paid for mainstream media are destroying the American dream. One man will use his microphone to change the narrative, spread information, and uncover the truth. Broadcasting live from the Next Gen Conservative Studios, this is the Whitfield Analysis with Sam Whitfield. Welcome to the Whitfield Analysis, ladies and gentlemen. I am your host, the aforementioned Mr. Sam Whitfield. Broadcasting live from NGC One here in Southern Florida on this beautiful Sunday evening, we are broadcasting live on the Next Gen Conservative Radio Network, and I want to thank you so much for joining us. Our voicemail line, if you want to chime in and leave a message, as always, is nine four one. Five six four five eight zero five. You can call and leave a voicemail at any time uh, during the show or twenty four seven three hundred and sixty five days a year, and let us know your thoughts, comments, or feelings about the show um, at any time. You can also follow me on Twitter at sam w underscore ngc hashtag wa radio show. And you can email me, samwhitfield at ngcmedia.net. And as always, we are joined by our producer, Jeff Hamill, who can be found on Twitter at the JHP. All right, folks, what have we got coming up here tonight? Uh, Michael Housem, we have a very special guest coming up later in the hour. Uh, Michael Housem from independentjournalreview.com will be joining us to discuss his latest article, uh, Trey Gowdy has actually come up with a new way to uh, quote unquote defeat Obama, and the strategy is to not defeat Obama at all. It kind of seems counterintuitive in a, a sense. It it actually doesn't seem to make sense. Uh, it's reverse how, logic, Sam. It's yeah, reverse logic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it is reverse logic, and it it might not make a lot of sense. But Michael Hausen will be joining us to discuss how the reverse logic makes sense, and also uh, we're going to talk to him a little bit about IndependentJournalReview.com in general, and uh, I guess also he has a new radio show. So we'll be talking to him about all of that. Should be uh, pretty interesting. Um. Anyway, folks, I want to start off the show um, talking about something on Facebook that has been bothering me a lot lately. Um, there have been several things on Facebook that have actually been bothering me, uh, namely Kim Kardashian's photo shoot, but we'll get to that later on. Probably that ace. That ace. Yes, we'll get we'll get on to that probably in the second hour. Not that we'll actually get on to Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Please Kardashian. no. Not that we'll get on to uh, Kim Kardashian's behind because Kanye is probably already there. But um, yeah, we'll leave that for the second hour. But um, in all seriousness. There's been a trend in politics that has been bothering the hell out of me for the last couple of years. And really, there, there's no other way to set this up, so I'm just going to come out and say this. It seems to me, ladies and gentlemen, that, that the GOP has a habit of uniting together during the primary elections, during the Senate races and the congressional races to get candidates uh, elected. And uh, we saw back in 2010, the Republicans were able to take the House uh, 
two years after Obama was elected the first time. It was a great Republican victory, but yet we fell down in 2012 during the presidential election. I think it was over three million Republicans did not show up to vote for Mitt Romney. Uh, then in 2014, obviously a week ago, we had the primary, and not only did we retain control of the House, but we also took the Senate. Uh, largest congressional wipeout since 1946, um, which is truly amazing when you think about it. However, I'm seeing a bunch of uh, comments on Facebook and a bunch of threads, uh, which are quite bothersome to me. Namely, uh, one in particular. So I guess uh, I guess Dr. Ben Carson has all but announced officially that he's going to run for president. And, you know, there, there are lots of people who like Ben Carson, and there are lots of people that don't like Ben Carson. Uh, but what bothers me is these conservatives on Facebook who have who have come out and said, well, if it's between Hillary and Ben Carson, I just won't vote. I, I just, I despise Ben Carson and I won't vote for him no matter what. And it's not just Ben Carson I've seen this behavior with. It's also with Rand Paul. It's also with uh, Ted Cruz and some of the other Republican forerunners that are bothering me. And, uh, folks, you know you know me and you know Jeff, we're not the biggest fans of the Republican Party by any means. I don't think anyone in the circle of uh, friends that I run, run with is a big fan of the Republican Party itself. However, uh, to not vote is just simply allowing the Democrats to win completely. By not voting, you're essentially voting for the Democrats, in a sense. You might not be doing it officially, but to me, that's just how it comes off. And um, I don't know... I don't know why we're all of a sudden into this mood where if it's not my candidate, I'm not voting at all. Um, I think people seem to have this notion of a perfect candidate. Um, and in reality, there is no such thing as a perfect candidate. Um, Jeff, do you have any thoughts on this matter? I just don't like the fact that Ben Carson comes out and he says one thing about Obamacare and how much he doesn't like it, and the entire GOP establishment seems to just jump towards him. Like he's the he's what we've been looking for for the past so many years. And I'm like, uh, no. Like he makes one good point. Awesome. What does he think about everything else? And to be honest, we don't know yet. And until he tells us what he believes in certain parts, like A, B, C, and D, I don't feel confident in voting for him. Now, if it does come down to him versus Hillary, obviously I'm going to vote for him because I agree with him more so than I would agree with um, with Hillary. Now, the other point that you brought up is if somebody you know, doesn't, oh, he's not my guy. Well, my guy didn't win. Well, get over yourself. You can vote under, you know, I'm not telling you you can't vote for Gary Johnson. If that's what your heart desires, if that's what you want this country to go under, that's fine. That's up to you. But he's not going to win. So if you want to look at this thing as a big FU GOP, go ahead and vote for Gary Johnson. I'm just saying Gary because he was the, Indi or he was the libertarian that ran in uh, 20 right. 2012. So you can go and vote for him. But he's not going to win. And if you are okay with your guy not winning, that's up to you. But if you want to, if you want somebody who is going to win, 
you have to vote one of the major parties. That's just the way that this system is run now. You might disagree with it, but that doesn't mean you can, you know, change it really. I mean, we can change it. If everybody changed it, then that's one thing. But a group of 50,000 people won't change it. Well, see, here, here's the other thing, too. I'm, I'm glad you brought up the, the fact that people don't like the Republican Party. I mean, and here, here's the thing. If you go back historically, ladies and gentlemen, what you'll find is that originally the Republican Party was kind of the third party back in the 1800s. Uh, they had to push out. They had to kind of reform the two-party system in the 1800s to deal with slavery, and that's kind of how we got the Republican and the Democrat Party. Um, the Democrats, contrary to what they would like you to believe, were for slavery, and the Republicans weren't. Um, my point in bringing that up is it doesn't really seem like there will be a way to have a third party system successfully but maybe we can get the maybe we can get one of the third the current third parties to replace one of the two um, that certainly seems more plausible and if someone can um, do that successfully I'm all for it so that's just kind of my little opening uh, rant um to open up the show. Now, I, uh, I want to add something real quick here. If sure, G- if Gary Johnson in 2012 would have run under the Republican ticket and just focused on his Republican ideals, I would have definitely voted for him. Now, I couldn't because I wasn't old enough to vote. However, I definitely would have voted for him over uh, anybody else who was running, except for Herman Cain. However, he wouldn't have won. But seriously, I would have done that over, I would have voted for Gary because I agree with most of what he says. It's just he wasn't under the Republican ticket. He wasn't going to win. I wouldn't have wasted my vote because to me, my ticket, my my vote is worth more than um, a big F you to the GOP establishment. To me, personally, right. And I mean, I I think I think that's what. I'll- where a lot of um, like Rand Paul, Rand Paul is more of the libertarian uh, ethos, but he's smart in the fact that he realizes that the libertarian ticket isn't going to do him a darn bit of good. So if he does decide to run, he is going to run under Republican, which I think is smart. Oh, definitely. Um. Anyway, though, so as I mentioned that at the beginning of the program. Uh, Michael Hausam is going to be joining us. And this is actually really fascinating. Um, Trey Gowdy is now advocating for Obama not being impeached. I guess after the election, um, I don't know. I I didn't hear too much of this, but I guess uh, Mr. Hausam is hearing different things than I am. A lot of Republicans, I guess, are calling for the impeachment of Obama. Uh, and Trey Gowdy brings up the point that basically that's not going to happen. So here is part of the article. And we'll bring this up with Mr. Hausam again here in a few minutes. But I kind of want to start off reading this just to kind of plant the seeds in your head. Um, so... Gowdy was on O'Reilly was on the O'Reilly Factor uh, the other night, and um, and Bill's topic was he wanted to ask uh, Trey Gowdy about the potential of Obama signing an executive order to grant illegal aliens uh, amnesty. All right, what else is new there? Um, O'Reilly then brought up impeachment and uh, Gowdy's... So it's not the Republican Party itself. It's Bill O'Reilly, which, what else is new? Uh, It seems to me that O'Reilly is always uh, crying out impeachment even when it's not practical. Uh, But that's kind of beside the point. Uh, 
And unfortunately, I've heard a lot of Republicans say the same thing. Even though it's not practical, they want to impeach Obama. Uh, Gowdy brings up, the, brings up the following points, and I think they're brilliant. Um, impeachment isn't going to work, number one, because it's a punishment, not a remedy. Two, because... Uh, Two, because Obama keeps ta- talking about impeachment, and uh, and his allies keep talking about impeachment. It's almost like they're daring us to impeach him. And uh, Gowdy just says that's not a good way to. Uh, we don't want to. We don't want to take the bait necessarily. Like, I guess they're trying to bait us and. Um, Gout is saying, as tempting as that sounds, uh, don't go there. And the other thing is, and this is another really good reason, uh, if we were to impeach Obama, guess who our president would be? Jeff, do you want to take a stab at this? Dun da da da! Joe Biden. Yep. Now, as much as I hate Obama, do we really want uh, do we really want a guy who can't speak properly to uh, what 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 is what is it speak? Do we want the man who says that he has never been proud to be his to be Obama's vice president? Or talks bad about his position because it's you know he doesn't really do anything. Do we really okay? So we think we've hit rock bottom with Obama. We ain't hit rock crap yet. Wait until Biden comes in. Freaking uh, no! You know what? We should get Biden in because because ISIS is going to feel so bad for us that they might just give us an Islamic leader, and then we won't be at absolute rock bottom. We'll be at you know, one level above rock bottom. Because right now we're at level, like, five above. So if we get Biden, it'll be absolutely rock bottom, and we're going to be begging for the Muslim Brotherhood to come in and help us out. That's pretty bad there. Yeah. Well, 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 you, well, you know, Je- well, you know, Jeff, and if Biden becomes president, here's the other thing. N- none of us will be able to uh, go into 7-Eleven anymore. Unless we can pull off an Indian a, accent, unless we can pull off a perfect Indian accent, and I I don't know about you, but uh, those Slurpees are really damn good, and I I don't want to have to fake an Indian accent every time I want one. Now, truth be told, here I don't have any Seven Elevens near me. The nearest Seven Elevens in like Philadelphia. So it doesn't affect me. However, if I'm in Virginia, which is where I know there's a lot of them, I'm screwed. <laughs> I can't do accents at all. And uh, looks like right. I'm not going to be getting any Slurpees. Right. So, so the moral of the story is if we get Joe Biden, no Slurpees. Yeah. Vote for Biden is like voting against Slurpees. Who the heck doesn't want Slurpees? Come on, America. Teenagers, wake up. <laughs> vote R. <laughs> Once you yeah. and diabetes, vote Republican. There you go. We let you eat whatever the heck you want. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the, that, uh, that could very well be our campaign slo- slogan in 2016. In all ser- seriousness, though, what is impeachment going to do uh, for for the country? I mean... Honestly, it's not going to fix anything. Um, and I've heard people argue that, well, it'll get rid of Obama. Okay. So Obama's gone and Biden's president. Now what? We've gotten rid of Obama, but not- did Obamacare magically go away because of Obama? Did Benghazi magically unhappen? Uh, did we automatically get out of the recession? The answer to this obviously is no. 
I'm not saying that I I'm not saying that impeachment that I wouldn't like to see Obama impeach because believe me, there are plenty of things I do think he's worthy of being impeached for. But at this point in the game, especially since it's 2014, we're going into 2015. He only has a couple of years left, and I realize that the argument I'm about to make could be argued in a lot of different ways. But at this point, at this point, are we really going to prevent a whole lot from happening if we impeach Obama? I just don't. Not with I just, Biden. Right. Not not well. Not with Biden, but even but even so, I mean, we're. A little more than halfway, we're we're coming up on the second half of his second term. So at this point, Jeff, what I'm really saying is, I mean, it's it's not like at this point in the game we're a little light, even if we wanted to re- to impeach him because he's already pushed through so much policy. It's not like it's not like if we had impeached him in 2010. That we could reverse this stuff. Like a lot of this is unfortunately set in stone now. And it's going to take a Republican president to change a lot of this, which won't happen until 2016, God willing. So, anyway, so we'll talk to Michael Housem about that in just a few minutes. Uh, quick word from our sponsors over Octopod. And we'll be right back with Mr. Michael Housem. Your weekend hasn't started until you start here. This is the Whitfield Analysis. Hey folks, Matt Dallas here. And right now, there is no better gift than a portable power bank from Octopod. A power bank is essentially a portable phone charger. Take it with you to football games, camping trips, school, or anywhere you want to keep your device powered where you're not going to be near an outlet. Octopod products make a great gift for anyone in your family. Visit octo-pod.com slash NGC. Once again, that is octo-pod.com slash NGC to buy your power bank today. He set out to finish what Andrew Breitbart started. And so far, he's winning the media war against the left. It's Sam Whitfield. All right, folks, uh, welcome back to the program. Um, So, I guess uh, Michael has been Mr. uh, Radio Show. Popular. uh, Popular. Popularity guy um, today. Everyone wants to talk to him. We want to talk to him. And I guess another show uh, wanted to talk to him. And I, I guess from what I understand, uh, the the radio show was supposed the radio show he was on was supposed to happen like right before mine. Uh, but I guess it's gone over a little bit. So they're finishing up there and hopefully he'll be on. Uh, here in just a couple minutes. Uh, so uh, we apologize, but now, now, Sam, I was going. I, I okay. So I wasn't going to tell anybody, but me and Sam actually talked from from the chat on uh, Mixer. By the way, if you guys aren't listening live and you're listening on iTunes, that's awesome. That's great. But you should also try and check us out on Mixer live. Uh, ngcmedia.net slash live is the best place you can listen to us. And um, in the chat room, which is another way, another reason why you should probably listen to us live is because it's fun and enjoyable. Um, and you can talk to us live. And um, how do I say this properly? I was going to voice impersonate Michael. The only problem is I've personally never heard his voice before. And so I was going to do an accent that sounded nothing <laughs> like him. And uh, it would have done nobody good. So um, i I've only heard his, I've only heard his voice like twice, maybe. Like I'm sure once he comes on, like I'll know. Oh yeah, this is Michael Housen. But like his his voice, like you know how there are some people who just who you, you can impersonate, and then there are those who you you just can't impersonate because they just sound 
like only they can do their voice. Right. So unique. But I can't I can't do any voice impersonations ever. Um I I can't do like Spanish. The only reason I can do a Spanish accent is because I can roll my Rs, but that's it. Um and Zach is also correct. He doesn't know what it sounds like. He, he doesn't know what he sounds like either. But the only problem is he would come on the air and it's on nothing like me. Um, but I, I, I do zero accents. Like you can say, okay, I want an Indian accent. Uh, welcome to Quickie Mart. That's about all I can do. Um, which is what we were t- talking about before uh, our Octopod break. Um, I can do a Spanish, which is, hola, señor, ¿cómo estás? Uh, I could do a, a French, uh, French Haitian accent. Uh, bon, bonsoir, zami, moi, uh, comme And I can only do those three. So I don't know what he sounds like. Um, I can only speculate from pictures, but that's <laughs> probably not the best way of doing it. Because <laughs> you can't really get a person's voice from a picture. And you can't get a picture from somebody's voice. Um, that's one of the things I love about radio. I had no idea what Sam looked like. I had all these things in my mind, what he could have looked like, you know, abs and super large biceps and stuff. But you never know until you actually see them in person or, in this case, Facebook or Skype. Um, which, I mean, Sam definitely has both both the um, six-pack six and he also has the 18-inch the biceps. But I, I, I didn't know the specifics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you you just didn't know how freaking huge my bio, <laughs> yes, <laughs> my bio, precisely my biceps were. <laughs> so, in fact, precisely. in fact, we can't do the webcam just because if uh, it would be the bicep cam. That's the that your entire webcam would just be focused huh? on on your bicep. It, like we would have your computer facing your face, but it would just like <laughs> the the Mac. Gods would it would just your mic or your your computer would just kind of like go down like you were closing it, but it would just stop at your biceps, and that's all we would be looking at for the for the next I don't know, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, however long we would try to um to talk with your biceps on camera, and it wouldn't last very long because it would end up sounding exactly like this. Because yeah. we would just be we would be uh, speechless looking at your biceps. Uh, oh, oh, I know. Sometimes, sometimes I even get amazed by how. <laughs> no, no. In, in all, in all seriousness, a perfect example of someone who's really deceiving is uh, Kyle Winter because. Oh yeah, Kyle. Kyle Winter is a year younger than, than I am, and yet he sounds older than all of us. Like I, before I even heard. Before I even heard of uh, before I well before I even saw what he looked like uh, when he originally was recruited to uh, Junior Factor Nation, I heard his voice and I thought we had recruited a twenty-something year old, and I was kind of like, well, doesn't that defeat the purpose of a youth network? And so, um. But then I asked Khan, who's like, at the time, it was like, oh, yeah, I, I'm I'm 17. And I'm like, you're how old? 17. Oh, yeah. And you, and you, ha- you have that voice. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of, I sound like, like a, a, a mouse compared to, him, to, compared to him, and I'm older. Like, me and Sam are talking about um, adult content, not like weird things but we're just talking about things that he can't participate in um mostly tobacco based and and kyle's over there with pretzels and he's like this is as close as i'll ever get because <laughs> because he's underage and it was it was like kyle how the heck are you so much younger than us it's just astounding to me yeah i i think i i think i asked him once like uh can you smoke cigars or something? And he was like, uh, I'm 17. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, it just does it. It's so misproportional. Anyway, we have uh, our guest has joined us. Sam? 
All right, joining us now is uh, Michael Hausen from IndependentJournalReview.com. He has written a uh, rather uh, fascinating piece on uh, Trey Gowdy's segment on the O'Reilly Factor, which explains why Obama shouldn't be impeached. And um, I guess Mr. Housen is also out promoting a new radio show, so we'll talk to him a little bit about that. So, uh, Mr. Before, Housen... Before he says anything, I was asked to, to impersonate his voice, not hearing his voice. Michael, I was asked to impersonate your voice. Let's see. I'm going to say a sentence, and you say the exact same sentence. Let's see if I was at least a tiny bit close. So... Uh, my sentence is, Sam Whitfield is the greatest person ever. Do you, do you, have, any friend, do you have any French fries in there? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, oh, that's pretty good. Uh, welcome to the program, sir. How are you doing? Gentlemen, I have got to tell you, I am so sorry. I was on a, a different radio show with a buddy in Missouri, and he had originally said that we were going to roll for 15 minutes, California time, 3.15 to 3.30. So 3.30 to talk to you folks would have been perfect. And the second we get on, he goes, oh, dude, the brakes got moved around today. I'm going to run you an extra 10, 12 minutes along. So I need to totally apologize for leaving you in a lurch for a bit. Oh, that's uh, that's perfectly fine. We're glad to have you uh, here. So, um, first of all, can you kind of explain what Independent Journal Review is and how you got started in the political commentary scene? Oh, sure. Uh, first of all, Independent Journal Review and the web address is ijreview.com. Uh, and it's a uh, center-right um, – political blog uh and it's it's along the lines of um oh gosh uh similar competitors would be uh huffington post or the blaze or townhall.com um or uh, real clear politics would be another or red state i mean there's a whole bunch of different conservative um political type blogs but uh, the, 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 the thing that we're probably the most proudest about, IJReview.com, is it is actually – it gets more traffic than any conservative website on the planet with the exception of Fox News. Uh, so it's a uh, – oh, gosh. I don't know what the numbers were most recently. But anytime the visit uh, – the, you know, the – Web traffic numbers come out. IJReview.com is always one of the top 50 on the planet Earth uh, and the only conservative-leaning website that gets more traffic than we do is Fox.com, which is obviously huge. Um, So there's a big internet presence, but most people don't recognize the name, although they typically do uh, on Facebook – uh, Independent Journal Review is also Conservative Daily, which has millions of followers. So if you've ever seen anything on the Facebook site Conservative Daily, that is Independent Journal Review. I I was wondering I was wondering about that because I I follow both pages and I was like hmm. These have yeah, almost the exact the, same headlines. A lot of the same headlines, a lot of the same thing. Yeah, I, the, there's also an IJ Review Facebook page, uh, but it gets a fraction of the volume that Conservative Daily does. But they're both fed by the exact same source, uh, IJReview.com. So, like, if you if you go to ijreview.com and pull up the story that you're referring to, uh, that's titled "Trey Gowdy Explains to America Why Obama Shouldn't Be Impeached," and his point is a brilliant one. So that's a story I wrote that you're bringing up a day ago, and it's kind of launched off. As of right now, it's two hundred and sixty some thousand views. Um, those views are kind of split between uh, Facebook IJ Review, Facebook Conservative Daily, as well as the IJReview.com. Wow, uh, that's that's pretty fascinating. And the thing that I was really shocked is when I first uh, you know heard of you guys, I was amazed to hear that you guys even beat out the Blaze. That was what really I think shocked a lot of people. Yeah, um, it's been. Um, I think it's been three or four months that The Blaze is pretty consistently behind us in traffic. Um, But the thing that that we most appreciate about that 
is they do about five times the number of stories every month that we do. So not only is our overall uh, volume of traffic higher than Glenn's site, um, on a per article basis, it's dramatically more just because they put so much more content out there. So that's our our approach, and it is different than the Blaze or a lot of the other sites, uh, conservative sites, is that the the editorial perspective is um, not just focused on preaching to the choir. So there, there we do get some criticism from the right that uh, we, it's not that we're trying to be fair and balanced, um, although I, in terms of using that exact language, which is obviously stealing from Fox, fair and balanced, that's what they say. But um, we're, we're trying to make an argument in our articles and trying to bring up points that don't just get the right side to nod their head in agreement, but also to engage conversation for folks that are either on the left or even more importantly, kind of in the middle uh, that either aren't engaged at all or kind of vacillate their perspective depending on who's making the argument. We're, We're trying to make a conservative appeal that's more broad based, that's more kind of winning hearts and minds as opposed to making those that are already on our side feeling good about themselves. Do you, do you understand the distinction I'm making with that? Oh, oh, I, I completely uh, agree with the distinction, and that's kind of what we're trying to do here at Next Gen Conservative as well, is this whole notion of kind of preaching to the choir. It's, it's great to get people who agree with your side to listen to you, but it only goes so far. Uh, um you know, as far as getting the message out. And, you know, we need to talk to more of our in the middle of the road or slightly to the left. And I've been following IJ Review for quite a long time. And uh, I just have to say that you guys do a spectacular job over there. Well, I really appreciate that. It It's funny that um, I get comments from people that I know that are either politically not interested or are kind of, you know, middle of the road that will say things that will be like, you know what, that article really made me think, or that's a perspective that I'd never considered before. Not because the perspective hasn't been out there, but they're just not consumers of right-wing blogs where they even hear that type of argument in the first place, if that makes sense. Right, yeah. Uh, And I'm frankly, I'm more interested in having conversations with people that are either on the left uh, without understanding why, or people that are in the middle that don't even think about it. That that's a more interesting milieu for me to spend my time than to sit down and talk to somebody that's totally engaged, totally up on the issues, and totally agrees with me on everything. Where we can pat each other on the back, feeling good about our, you know conservative little world, whereas, frankly, the rest of the world doesn't pay any attention to it and just chugs on by. Right. I, I, com- I completely agree with everything that you're saying. And again, I think, I think it's, it's a concept that I think has been out there in terms of, like, ideological. I just don't think anyone has put that put it into practice. So I'm glad the IJ Review is uh, doing that. Right. Okay, so- and I, I appreciate you saying that you agree with every single thing I say. I'm very comfortable in an environment with people who agree with every single thing I say, so I like that. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, well we well we all are. Uh, so <laughs> my mom's listening, and her head just exploded when I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I do have to say one thing about IG Review's website that I love, um, and I wish other websites brought it up and, and would do the same thing, is it tells you the amount of views that somebody that a website has, and it's all about what our current administration thinks that they do, is transparency. Um, because someone like The Blaze or Fox News, they can say, oh yeah, we had record numbers. But it's like, I mean, you can of course find out how many they have, but you guys just, boom, Right on the website, 411 people right now are looking at your article. 266,000 people saw it, and there are over 29,000 shares with it. And I just love, I, I, I don't know, it's just me, but I love that it's just in your face. This is how much traffic this this certain page has um, that was up yesterday. It's not even, you know, today's article, and, and I really do like it. And I did I had no idea Conservative Daily was, was you guys, but... 
I mean, I followed them for a really long time, and and uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah, it's a it's a very common conversation. Um, where in fact, I was even um, oh, I was ta- I was on a, a national radio show talking with the producer. I was on Dennis Miller's show a few weeks ago, and I was talking with the producer about that. And he's like, you know what? I, I see your stuff, and I love it, and I see all these numbers about. Uh, IJ review and this and that and I I, I I I don't know where I could find you guys and I said well on Facebook you've probably seen our stuff as conservative dailies like oh okay so that that the connection of those two things makes a lot of sense for folks and that it's even as much as we're proud of the website numbers for ijreview.com when the Facebook publisher numbers come out, we're always in the top 10 of all the Facebook publishers. Uh, and we're usually one behind Huffington Post. And they always have somewhere between 20 and 30 more published articles per month than Conservative Daily does. I mean, 20 to 30 times is a huge difference. Yeah, so nuts. we might have, you know, dozens of articles and they will literally have hundreds or in some cases thousands of articles that they've published. Um, they're just throwing a lot more stuff up against the wall. Right. Um, so anyway, so you wrote this great article about uh, Trey Gowdy uh, explaining to uh, America why Obama shouldn't be impeached. It is a brilliant, it is a brilliant point that he makes, and uh, it was one that I hadn't even thought of, which is that it's not really going to fix anything. It's just a punishment. It doesn't really uh, remedy anything, and this is something that you and I have actually been talking on Facebook for the past couple of days is Republicans, I think, just seem to be so focused on getting Obama out of office that they don't really think about what to do next. Right. Well, that's and, – and the way Gowdy said it is so totally funny that I loved um, is, you know, his point is, look, uh, I've met Joe Biden. Do we really want that cat to be the president of the United States? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's – you know what? It's funny, man. Out of all these comments that are on um, – the comments on uh, the IJ Review article or the comments on Conservative Daily or on the IJ Review Facebook site or even on my couple of Facebook sites about this article, there are a lot of conservatives that are extremely angry with Trey Gowdy for not – recommending pursuing impeaching this guy uh in fact i just got into a, a, a brief argument earlier today the guy's like he is the president is a lawbreaker he should be impeached he should be jailed uh that republicans should hold to their principles and they shouldn't let up and they just on and on and on and on and on and i i had to point out to the guy i'm like uh well first of all um at this point even if we get you know um even if we do get Louisiana, uh, that's only nine seat swing in the Senate. We're 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 not going to even we're we're not going to be able to to impeach the guy to begin with, even in Congress. Let alone the political fallout that could happen from this. I just yeah. yeah. Uh, let alone Gowdy's point of who would the president be thereafter. Um, yeah. It's it to me. It's the similar argument that happens for conservatives being upset about all the gay marriage stuff, regardless of your perspective on homosexuality or your perspective on whether or not gays should get married. Uh, one conservative critique of the things that's happened over the past couple of years is that you take a statewide initiative like California had, and then you put it into the courts, and it becomes a handful of people that make a legal decision that dictate American society, as opposed to people making an argument. I would far rather have, in 2016, a conservative Senate, a conservative House, and a conservative presidency. I'd rather have those three branches of government dominated by conservatives, because a conservative argument was plainly made to the American people. The conservative points were made that convinced voters' minds. I'd rather have that 
be the cause of the victory than some sort of legal challenge that resulted in articles of impeachment being successfully prosecuted. And we end up with a conservative, not because the argument was made, but because there was some sort of excellent legal wrangling that occurred. Does that make sense? Oh, it, it may. I'm I'm listening to everything that you're saying, and again, I completely I completely agree with with everything now, you, you're saying. I don't because Michael is not conservative enough. Dang it! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. we, oh, here we go. We have <laughs> we 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 have a we know we know some people who are who get really hung up on certain issues, particularly the issue of gays and gay conservatives. They don't necessarily like the idea of uh, gays being in the Republican Party, which I don't see it's why that that's big that big of an... Yeah, it's not that big of an issue. Um, so anyway... Um, Even now, wh- whether or not it's an issue, my, my thought about it is, okay, California and Massachusetts are extremely progressive or whatever, and they're going to hold their votes. Maybe Alabama, Arkansas, and Kentucky are going to have a different perspective. Uh, so there there is a federal issue, uh, a federalism issue that comes up. But I, 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 I like the idea of particular states, the voters making decisions – not just a handful of guys in black robes. And it's the same kind of thing with impeachment. And and here's what I think about it. It was um, a few months ago. I was up in uh, in Universal City, up in uh, Los Angeles, where Universal Studios is. There's a huge, big mall, the Universal City Walk. And a bunch of us were there to see Dinesh D'Souza's movie, 2016, which I I assume you guys both saw that movie? We... I... I've uh, I have not seen 2016 yet. Uh, Jeff, did you see that when it was in my area? All right, yeah, well, you know so- the basic idea behind the movie, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so there's a bunch of us conservatives that all met together, and obviously we're the only ones in the little theater room. <laughs> but as we're standing out in front and we're we're looking this uh, Universal City Walk, this huge mall, uh, it is it is like. Times Square, right? So that, that's another analogy. Picture Times Square. So the three of us are, are broadcasting this radio show in Times Square. And the three of us are totally engaged in the nuances and the specifics of all the various issues of the day. And we care deeply about them. We have well-informed positions and decisions on those. But we're looking out into Times Square and we're seeing thousands and thousands of people walk by. The question is, what percentage of those people give a crap about any of the stuff that we're all caring about? The reality is, not that many of them do. But it's those same people or a percentage of them that are actually casting ballots for initiatives and representatives and senators and governors and presidents. If those people can be reached with a cons- with a well put together, passionate, convincing, conservative, principled argument, that will have far more of an impact for the change not only in American culture but in the American economics and American political world. Having those people understand those things and to actually hear an argument and understand it and even care a tiny bit about it will have far bigger of an impact on America than what a bunch of judges or a bunch of lawyers happen to do in some court case somewhere, whether it's gay marriage or the president getting impeached. That That's – and, and Republicans would do well, certainly conservatives would do well, to think about creating arguments that have an impact on the people walking around Times Square or Universal City Walk than whether or not they can hire the right kind of attorney to make a case in front of a judge. Uh, all right. Um, that all sounds good. We, we have a uh, question for you from one of our listeners in the chat room. Um, right. His question is – um, I don't think impeachment is a good idea politically, but the danger of not impeaching Obama is that we establish a precedent that his unlawfulness is not worthy of impeachment. It's opening up a Pandora's box for presidents of the future to do worse and worse. Your thoughts? You know what? That's a that's a legitimate point. That's a very good question. Uh, the left asked the exact same questions about George Bush. 
I mean, impeach George Bush was a banner that you saw flying all the time. Um, it f- calls for impeachment over particular issues of uh, inferred transgression of law has actually happened on just about every president, at least in my lifetime. Uh, and the only one that was successfully impeached, obviously, was Nixon. Now, has Obama's White House done stuff, in fact, in some cases more egregious than Nixon's White House did, and what comes to mind immediately is Fast and Furious and the IRS. You could probably make the case for that. But it, it all comes down to um, – I mean that, that, that question of setting precedent, uh, yes, but um, is, is, is that the right political hill for Republicans to charge? Right. Because if it w- would a uh, – first of all, you'd have to figure out whether or not you could be successful or not. Um, like uh, my perspective on Ted Cruz's noble battle uh, on Obamacare, he had no chance of that ever being successful ever. Politically, did it hurt the conservative cause or not? Um, n- n- not for the folks that were on board with the pitchfork standing behind him, but across the country. And I would argue that across the country, that lost the optics battle and it lost the um, political battle, even though I agreed 100 percent with every single thing that he was doing. Right. That's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give a non-answer. <laughs> <laughs> no. yeah. If I could be candid about it. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean, it, it's 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 a very tough thing to uh, decipher for sure. Um, one last thing, because we're running low well on uh, time here, I I know you made the announcement today on Facebook that you have a radio show uh, coming out here. So, can you briefly tell us a little bit about that too? Uh, yes, uh, I've had a radio show and. Uh my fellow writer at IJ Review, Mike Miller, he's the political editor at IJ Review. He and I have both had shows for most of this year. And we re- and so each and I he and I both have been doing 2 hours a day for most of this year. But we've been guesting on each other's show for an hour each week. So between the two of us we're doing 20 hours of radio a week. Two of those hours are with each other. We realized a couple weeks ago that those two hours are the best out of the 20 hours. So we decided to join up uh, forces together, and from 2 to 3.30 Eastern Time, um, Mike Miller and I are going to be doing a show together. All right. That, that sounds good. And uh, where can we find that? A couple of places. It's uh, the show's going to be called "The Right Mics" with Mike Miller and Michael Hausam, and "The Right Mics" is M I C S because we're creative geniuses and we came up with the right mics. Um, yeah, and I say that tongue firmly and planted in my cheek. Uh, so a couple ways to find it. The right mics us is our new website that's got all the contact information. Uh, you can also find it. It's going to be streaming and all the archives are going to be on vigilant liberty radio dot us. Um, you, you can also find it on Spreaker under the right mics. You can also just go to um, to my Facebook page, which is House Rules with Michael Housem. All the details are there as well. Awesome. Uh, so I'm- Thank you for uh, coming on. I think you're one of the most brilliant political writers uh, out there right now, and thank you, thank you for coming on the show. Hey, you know what, man? It was such a privilege when you asked me. I was thrilled to do it. Literally, any time, I'd love it. Well, I, I'd love to have you back. Thank you again, and uh, we'll talk to you down the road. All right, Jens. Have a good night. Bye now. See ya. Jeez, uh, Michael Hausen. I, I think he's just... Now, now you know, Jeff, why I think he's so brilliant. I'm, I mean, I'm sitting over here thinking, I, I kind of know politics. And then I listen to him, and I realize I don't know anything. Like, this guy is just, he is brilliant, dude. He, he, is, he is on fire. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I, I kind of know him because I run in Dennis Miller's circles. And again, I thought I was pretty good, uh, but, man, I, I, I feel like I just got took to kindergarten Oh my like, gosh, I'm not even kidding. Back to Politics 101. Uh, seriously. And, and even, even like, some things, like, when he wasn't even, like, he was answering but not answering Zach's question, I was like, 
he has a point there. <laughs> and he was like, I'm just dodging the question. I'm like, no, you brought some good stuff up. But he says he was just, you know, not answering the question. Hey, folks, Matt Dallas here. And right now, there is no better gift than a portable power bank from Octopod. A power bank is essentially a portable phone charger. Take it with you to football games, camping trips, school, or anywhere you want to keep your device powered where you're not going to be near an outlet. Octopod products make a great gift for anyone in your family. Visit octo-pod.com slash NGC. Once again, that is O-C-T-O-P-O-D.com slash NGC to buy your power bank today. Hey folks, Matt Dallas here. And right now, there is no better gift than a portable power bank from Octopod. A power bank is essentially a portable phone charger. Take it with you to football games, camping trips, school, or anywhere you want to keep your device powered where you're not going to be near an outlet. Octopod products make a great gift for anyone in your family. Visit octo-pod.com slash NGC. Once again, that is octo-pod.com slash NGC to buy your power bank today. thought they had won the war over the millennial generation. Conservatives feared that the founding ideals were dead. They weren't counting on Sam Whitfield to try and stop them. Broadcasting live, it's hour two of the Whitfield Analysis with your host, Sam Whitfield. All right, folks, welcome to the Whitfield Analysis, the second hour. I am the aforementioned Sam Whitfield, broadcasting live from NGC1 here in Southern Florida. And we are broadcasting live on the Next Gen Conservative Radio Network. Our voicemail line, if you want to leave a voicemail, is 941-564-5805. You can follow me on Twitter at SamW underscore NGC, hashtag WA Radio Show. And you can email me, Sam Whitfield at NGCmedia.net. And man, oh man, uh, in case... In case you weren't listening to to the first hour, which I don't know why you wouldn't have, especially if you're listening on to iTunes, man, we we just had a fascinating interview with uh, Michael Hausam of IJReview.com, and uh, that cat knows his... He knows his stuff. Yeah, just... uh, When when we were... um, We were on air... Um, so if, if, if you're listening to this on the, on the podcast, you might notice that it ended abruptly. Um, and even if you're listening to us, um, you know, not live, if you're listening to us, uh, on, on iTunes or whatever, you notice the fact that we were, you know, we just kind of had to stop. The reason was because we ran out of time. What we were going to try and do was after the show we were talking and it was like, this guy is like I thought I knew my stuff. I know like a, a great deal, especially comparative to other people in my circle. I know my stuff. This guy knows his stuff. Uh oh yeah. If if you th- if you guys think I'm the analyzer, well shoot, I'm thinking of giving up that title and giving it to him because uh, I mean. There wasn't anything that he said that even if I if I was even if I was a conservative, there wasn't a single point that I could argue successfully against. Yeah, yeah, and, and I mean everything he said was was on the mark. Everything that he had to share was, um, you know, had comedy to it. It had a sense of, um, it had a sense of comedy. It had a sense of of being enlightened and 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 goodwilled and it was also the conservative of which we should be focusing upon which to me and I would think that uh, Michael and Sam would agree with this is the the it, well is the economic conservative and the social moderate slash libertarian right and and, and, and he, he even brought that up I'm not just saying See, this guy kind of made a no. He he. This guy really made the mention of of social libertarianism. He might not have said those words exactly, but I'm pretty sure he would at least agree with moderation um, when it comes to social power or social social uh, politics. And he and he and the other thing that 
he he said, which I've been saying for years now, and Jeff has been saying for a long time too. Basically, everyone at NGC has is look. Even if you're a religious conservative, we don't have any problem with that. But politically, it doesn't work out because, and here's why. And he, and he listed off all these example examples of like you know why it's better to stay secular when it comes to politics, and you know even if you are against you know gay marriage you know, in a moral sense. The thing with it is, folks, you have to realize it's not a winnable, it's not a winnable battle when you're talking about, uh, you know, trying to restrict gay, gay marriage. I mean, I think that Michael, in terms of that topic, brings up the best solution, which is to just leave it up to the states. Uh, you know, what's bad about letting each individual state uh, decide what they want to do. Isn't that the original intention was for every individual state to make up their own mind by, you know, assuming since they're, since the government is supposed to be, since we are supposed to elect people that we agree with, therefore the government should be of the people. Therefore the government of the states, the state governments can choose or, you know, vote on, et cetera, et cetera, on what the specific states want. If it doesn't have to do with the federal government. Which means if it's not interstate commerce, if it's not taxation, massive, like governmental taxation, that's what the Fed is for. The Fed isn't for should two dudes get married in Los Angeles. That's not what the, that's not what the federal government is for. This, the, the state government is for that. Nonetheless, the fact that it shouldn't be a part of it at all. The only reason it is right. for tax reasons, but there's this thing called civil unions they could have. And we can bring this stuff up and we can talk about this from the conservative standpoint. But here's the thing. This is the thing that the the bottom line of we are never going to win an election, a presidential election running off of no. No, we don't want you to get married. No, we don't want you to do this. No, we don't want you to do that. It's kind of like the Christian mindset where people say, well, what is a Christian for? I don't know, but I know what they're against. They're against premarital premarital relationships. They're against tattoos. They're against smoking. They're against drinking. They're against this. They're against that. They're against, 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 against. No, 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 no. When the whole thing is, what are we for? And and we're constantly missing this all the time. We should right. stop focusing on we're against gay marriage. When we should say we're for people's individual liberty right and and i I think that this is something that really a lot of people are starting to come around in the party at least hopefully is we shouldn't be so much a party of what are we against it's what are we for um you know we're for personal individual liberty that even matt dallas of the matt dallas program uh he and i were talking this weekend and we've had this discussion before, but he even argues uh, that gay marriage is a conservative principle based on the fact that the way he would propose it is allowing the states to to do it their way, which is all, which is basically allowing you know the individual to do what they want with their life. Yeah, and it should be a conservative issue. It should be that conservatives are going out and saying this is a state issue. This is not, you know, we always say, and and I've heard this since 2006, we should have the government get out of our bedrooms. They should be out of our houses. They should be out of our education system. They should be out of this, out of that, out of this, but they should be in our marriage. They should be in our relationships. They should, no, you'd never hear that from a conservative, but they do that. That's exactly what they're saying when they tell us that we can't date whoever we want. We can't do whatever we please. Now... Am I saying that, uh, you know, Sam here owns a, a Christian bakery and a gay couple comes up to him and says, hey, you have to make, make us a cake. Uh, no, no, he doesn't. And that's the thing that, you know, it doesn't just go one way. It's double, you know, it's a double, double edged, uh, double edged sword. You right. get the freedom. I get the freedom. And in the middle is freedom. And, and I mean, the, 
and I mean there there are there are extreme left gay gay groups like glad glad out there and like a lot of conservatives out there always tight well what about when glad tried to uh you know what about when they tried to sue that bakery out in Colorado and I'm like well that's different because they were being aggressive and they were being uh a holes about it and they that you know, you know they weren't being civil about it but um, and I don't, I don't really know why we're even talking about gay marriage right now, but the bottom line it is is a lot of these examples a lot of more I don't want to say right wingers because I'm a right winger, but a lot of the religious right out there use these extreme extreme examples, and they try to paint it as the entire gay spectrum. Right, and I I'm kind of stepping on eggshells here because I don't want to take too much out of my show because on uh, Tuesday night, Sam and I are going to be talking about um, pretty much this. We have Me and Sam will have a message on Tuesday. Shameless plug here. You did a shameless plug on my show. I'll do one on yours. Yep. Um, <laughs> um, hey, this is you produce this show, so you know, you're free to do whatever you technically, want. Technically, right? I could just put up me saying... Listen to the Jeff Hamill program on iTunes for an hour and say that it was an episode of the of Sam show, but I would never do that. Heck, I could do that for any show. Ooh, no, I'm kidding. Um, but the the one thing is, there, like you just said, there's the conservative religious right, not even the conservative right. It's it's the it's the Christian right, and I'm not against Christianity. Heck, I work for a church. You think I'm against the church? Absolutely not. I love the church, and I love what my specific church is doing. And you know what we're doing? We have an entire initiative called the Love Lancaster Initiative, where we go out and we love our community. Do you know what one of the qualifications is to for us to be part of Love La- or for you to be part of Love Lancaster? You have to be alive. That's about it. You don't even have to go to our church. You don't even have to be a Christian. You could be a, a gay atheistic. Um, liberal, uh, liberal, and you know how much I care about that zero because you were giving up your time standing beside me, um, you know, um, raking leaves for an elderly community. That's what matters. What you do with your life is what matters. Now there are the extreme LGBT communities. Glad is one of the big ones. We shouldn't be tolerating them just as we shouldn't be tolerating blank, 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 enter name here, enter multiple names here. Westboro, for an, exa- Westboro, as an example. and I'm thinking of specific smaller names here, three of them in particular, who constantly go out against gay people because of one opinion, because of one thing. I was brought up in the church, and I was this, and I... Shut up. You were brought up in the church, yes, but you know what? This isn't the perfect little churchy world that you live in, so get over it. And we're never going to win an election if we say, we are not for you living the way you want to live. You better listen to me. No, listen to Mm -hmm. us. We have to embrace these people and stop saying we're against you and say we're for your independence. When the heck did the conservative party go against our entire belief system? Where it's individual liberty. You can do what you want. The government has nothing to say. The the church, in, in some sense, well, the church can have a say in the relationship that you have. Um, but not the state or the federal government. They have no say. They are supposed to have no say if you marry a person of the same sex, opposite sex, a goat for all I freaking care. Well, all the state cares. I mean, I would personally judge you. But that's up to me. And don't do this hate mongering, but I love you, BS. That doesn't, that's not right. You don't love somebody if you constantly tell them they're going to hell. Wink, wink, hint, hint. It's, I'm talking to you, certain individual. You, you don't love people by saying, repent or go to hell. That's not, that's not love. That's hate. Disguised as love. Yeah. yeah, I completely agree with you 100%. And with that, 
because this is how sick minded I am. Uh, so, in case you haven't heard uh, in the news, Kim Kardashian posed nude yet again. What a surprise. Um, this was also, I couldn't find the IJ re- review link to this article, although. Let me just say this. IJ Review is, I think, probably one of my top news sites that I go to now. So I found out about the store initially on IJ Review. I can't find the exact article. But can I be honest here? Who give, Who cares? I mean, is it... She's doing this because she wants attention, that's all this oh, is. Totally, dude. There's no reason why she would be doing any of this if it wasn't for the attention. It's the same reason why she named her child Northwest. That's her kid's name. And here, okay, so she was... I just did a Google search and Wikipedia comes up. Um, so she was married to uh, some dude from 2000 to 2004. Somebody else from 2011 to 2013. So you do your math, 2004, 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Single for seven years. Then gets married until 2013. So she's married for two years. And then a year later, she gets married to Kanye West. You think that relationship is going to last very long? Uh, no. And she she's like posing nude, uh, which to me, this isn't really nude nude. But I mean, it's showing her, her butt. And she... She's doing this for attention, and she's doing it under the idea of a skill. Yeah, yeah, because because filling because filling your uh, champagne, putting a champagne glass on your on your rear end and uh, filling it. Uh, which, by the way, like I I want to know like how many shots they had to do before like they got they got it right like. I can just imagine that champagne must have been everywhere at some point. But she has 21.7 million followers on Instagram. Good god. Good god. It, it's important for us to bring her up because of the fact that her can her her champagne paper uh magazine cover has uh four over four sorry, over 541 thousand likes over a half a million likes for a picture called break the internet kim kardashian with a champagne bottle uh you know going up and over her head into a champagne glass which i'm pretty sure was photoshopped i'm just gonna say it here there's no way she got that to do that and even if she did that's not a skill that's called luck and it's also called multiple takes well, even if, yeah, even if she did, like that's what I was saying originally. Like, I wonder how many, like, if if that was in fact legit. Like, I've seen. Uh, I don't know if you've ever, ever seen these, but there, there's, there are these guys that do. They're called champagne carvings, where people will literally take like a sword and whatnot and pop open. Uh, a champagne bottle with a sword. It's actually pretty cool to watch. That is a skill because it's potentially dangerous. I mean, you can have glass all over the place or you could stab yourself or something can happen. But even with all that, I mean, champagne always makes a mess because it gets all over the place. So what I want to know is how many is like by the time they... By the time they were done with that shoot, the set must have, must have just reeked of champagne or something. <laughs> okay, I was uh, technically wrong. She did pose nude. Um, according to eonline.com, she did a full frontal. Um, and I, The reason I, I know that is because I wanted to find out how much she made for this, and I can't find the answer. But uh, she did, in fact, a full frontal. Now, I haven't seen it. Um, uh huh. No, I they actually blurted it out. Uh, thank heavens. Um, nope, nope. Now, if you go to papermag dot com, uh, you do see everything. And let's just say, don't go on that website. 
uh, for some reason she's like this 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 uh, goddess. No, she's not some some sex god. She's disgusting. I even even with everything thing being said, I I've, I've seen let's let's just say I, I've seen prettier <laughs> prettier women. Okay. Her net worth is $65 million, and she makes 25 to $30 million a year. That's not even counting whatever astronomical amount of income Dude. her husband makes. Um, uh, according to E! News, a rep from Paper confirmed that Kardashian wasn't paid. So she wasn't paid at all for the magazine. That's actually really surprising for me. Uh, she was very excited to work uh, with French photographer... Jean Paul something the rep said paper um, has never paid anyone to be on its cover. That's really interesting to me. I thought she'd get paid a bunch, but no, she has so much money, making thirty million dollars a year, uh, for having a quote unquote skill. Uh... But not a skill. You can't have a skill. Posing nude isn't a skill. Uh, or I mean. It's, it's well, not, it's, not a, it's not a skill. Uh, no, there are there are Playboy playmates, and they make. They, I know that they do pay them a- anyway. Anyway, though, my point is again, and and it's perfectly it's kind of redundant why we're bringing this up because she is a pop culture icon, but it's interesting because in the thread that where I posted this, um, Zach started talking about healthcare and he wanted to know what my health care solutions are. And Zach, it's not that I didn't see the answer to your question. It's that at this current time, I got nothing, buddy. I honestly, I honestly don't. I'm not, I'm not a doctor, so I have no idea. So I don't have any ideas for healthcare reform other than that we need to uh well I think that I think for one the the private insurance companies should get a little more I don't think you should be denied from your current coverage if you like it. Um I would actually go to Obama's original statement of if you like your doctor you can keep it. Um even, that even, one, if, uh, even if that's true, you can't actually do that because of the – you know who competes against the government? Nobody. Nobody can compete against the government because they have unlimited money. They can say, oh, your, your, current, um, your current coverage is less than, than us. We'll change that. Yeah. We'll, we'll cover. Like my dad works for a, a private health insurance company, uh, mostly for corporations, but they also do a lot of uh, independent work as well. Um, some some idiot was like, oh, uh, Obamacare is going to be amazing. And my dad goes, you're an idiot. We're going to lose our jobs over this. Because so, he's going to be competing against the government. Nobody can ever beat the government until the, until the government goes bankrupt the only person who, the only thing that can go up against the government is another government of a higher economic power so so Zach let me rephrase that i i do have a solution jesus care i i'm 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 ser- i'm serious about that too uh because if because there can't be another government entity that competes against Obamacare successfully, except maybe for Jesus. But, um, I, I mean, I don't know, Jeff. Uh, Zach asked me this question on Facebook, but since you have the relative who works in healthcare, uh, you seem to be slightly more knowledgeable on this system than I do. Um, <coughs> excuse me, I just know that um that it like economically this this thing is horrible um we can try and pretend to say that uh for some reason it's going to work that if you have more people in a, a failing um economy i e medicare medicaid uh free health care for the most part to people who don't have money if you're going to expand that same program and say everybody is included including the, the however million they were trying to add on, 
all of you guys are included for no more extra tax money. And in fact, you're going to have to spend less. How the heck does that make sense? We're going to pay doctors the same. You're going to get the same coverage. Um, we're going to tax you the same. Um, now, they were saying that we're going to tax us less, but let's be honest here. They're not going to tax us any less. Um, they can't. And we're just going to... I, I don't think they can tax us less even if they wanted to. Not not at the current director. Like, not on not the current... Uh, or whatever that word is, but direction. Like, yeah, well, that was the that word, but that works too. Um, if if they wanted to go in in this in this 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 uh, the straight line, this direction of a straight line, they cannot continue doing this unless if they tax us. And here's the here's the bottom line. They always talk about that one percent. Oh, the one percent makes you much. Da, 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 da. If we took every dollar that the one percent makes. Multiplied it by a hundred, we would have about half of it solved. That's taking every single person's money, every single person who's ever lived in the United States, and that's just saying that takes about that takes care of most of the problem. That's not okay. Our problem isn't a tax problem. We shouldn't be taxed more. By the way. By the way, um, they they said it's a tax, but now it's a penalty. But it can't be a penalty, so it's a tax. Whatever the whatever they're saying now, this whole idea of making somebody purchase something they don't want, or they will pay a fee, a penalty, or a tax, however you say it, is unconstitutional. And we had the, the U.S. Supreme Court came in and said, "Uh, yeah, it's it's constitutional." Bull crap! It is. It's obviously not. It's not constitutional. It's kind of the same thing. If if we, if me, Sam, um, Stephanie, and Matt all said every single U.S. citizen must pay for a subscription to NGC Media or will tax you, we would be going to jail. Every single one of us. And rightfully so. We're forcing people to purchase something. But we can't. And and oh. I, I just saw something from Zach, and Zach said we, we just have to replace it. We do. We can't get rid of this. People are going to say, let's repeal it, let's repeal it, let's repeal it. It's not possible. We can't do it. It's too far in. It, we're too far into this crappy system. We can't repeal it and get rid of it. We have to fix it. And the the easiest way to fix it is allow people to have the coverage that they wish i.e. they can have the federal system, but it's just not going to be as good as uh, as private care. Hello, that's the whole idea behind government help. Am I, am I wrong here, Sam? Isn't the whole idea with private help supposed to be the bottom of the barrel, the crappiest of the crap that barely gets you by so that one day you're able to say, I'm sick of this. I'm going to go out and get a job. I'm going to be able to raise my own money, and I'm going to be able to pay for my own health insurance, my own gas, my own food. Right. This is the problem with America. Yeah. Now, now let me say this. There were certain parts of the health care bill that I do agree with. Not very many, mind you, but there was one part in particular which required the health insurance companies to, you know... It basically forced them to stop denying people with pre-existing conditions because the insurance companies didn't feel like it. That part I agree with, and that part was pretty much bipartisan. Uh, you know, Republicans Republicans don't want to see insurance companies deny people with pre-existing conditions or people who really need it, but that's where the health care reform bill should have stopped, in my opinion. No, I would uh, even I would even disagree with you, Sam. Um, I I know the intentions are good, and I know the reason why we would say no, like like the private companies can't do that, but they can. The whole idea of the free market is okay. Let's say for my dad's company, Sam applies to get insurance through them, and they say no because you're too much of a risk. Or, you know, hypothetically, Sam is too much of a risk. That's up to them. But I guarantee you if another company comes in and says, yeah, we'll take you. Now, it could be different with something like terminal like cancer. If that was the case, 
there should be something in place that they can't these people can't not get insured but maybe that's what the government plan is just a bare minimum they are right. in, like cancer is a huge thing that they keep throwing at us and i agree that yeah, people and, that that are that have cancer should not be um denied coverage for at least the basic bottom of the barrel if i if i keep using that analogy Right, yeah, and and I mean that similar to what similar way to what I was saying. I I shouldn't I shouldn't be denied because I'm in a wheelchair. That's something I can't help, and that's what that's what the liberal the liberals were arguing. That was their whole initial argument of Obamacare, or at least that's what my liberal friends were using it, you know, to broach to me. And that I that I agree with. You know, people who have cancer, people who are disabled shouldn't be turned down based on that. And I agree that any insurance company that, you know, did that, well, they need to change. But that's where the law should have ended, in my opinion. It, yeah, I would be happy with that. If they ended it right there, I'd be happy with that. And the, the other thing, the other thing too is, the other thing too is, regarding disability and social security, there are there are other methods too, you know, uh, Social Security will work with your, you know, insurance company, and mo- most insurance companies, believe it or not, like Aetna, Aetna is pretty good about um, Aetna is pretty good at clearing up, uh, you know, stuff for me. Still, this idea that insurance companies are evil, I don't necessarily, I think, is a myth somewhat. Um, it's not so much that they're evil. It's like you said, they don't want to take the risk on people who aren't necessarily going to be good payers, I guess, is the term I'm looking for. Um, yeah, I, I, I have nothing to add. I agree with you. Um, for yeah. Part. Let's. Do you want to look at some comments? I can read them out to you. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let's let's go to the. I was going to say let's go to the phones, but we don't have phones. So let's go to the so, hypothetical phones here. Which, if you aren't part of the phone slash chat, uh, mixler dot com slash ngc media, my friends. That's all we have to go to. Um. So there are a couple of comments from Zach and Barbara. Zach said the replacement of or um sorry for Obamacare has to be financially solvent. Um, let private health insurance agencies compete across state lines and provide quote unquote bare bones policies at very low prices. The insurance companies will complete, um, uh, will compete with, with crazy for the huge market. So they will compete like crazy for the huge market. Uh, and then he said something, he said, Jeff, but we have to replace it with something. You can't just complain about it. And I, I completely agree. One of the things I talk to Sam a lot about is if you are com- if you come to me with a problem, you better have a solution in mind. And my solution is um, we have to change it. And, and the way that we change it is we have to take down the tax burden and we have to say that it is a bare minimum. And we will tell you that this plan sucks. Absolutely sucks. Um, Barbara says... Uh, what's wrong is that they exclude themselves from a tax that is required upon the rest of the people. Uh, Zach continues, there's a lot um, there's a lot that are nice ideas, Sam, but the system has to be made uh, financially sound through free markets. Uh, Health care was just an excuse for government expansion through totalitarianism. It was never about providing health care to the uninsured and he hits the nail right on the freaking head right there it it wasn't it wasn't we're the nice guys everybody's gonna say oh yeah we were the nice guys we were trying to you know help out the little guy the whole reason they originally did it totalitarianism trying to advance that movement and barbara barbara brings up a very good point which is that they excluded themselves from the same from the uh from the law um and yeah um it's kind of like the uh if if you ever went to an old summer camp kind of like the ones back in the 70s and 80s the ones that are like in movies since i'm not that old um and you know the the uh the lunch ladies they hand you the slop on the on the plate and it's like here you go sonny it's uh 
liver and they throw it on your plate and you're like, why don't you eat it? No, it's it's for you guys. It's for you. It, it's kind of the same idea. Here's the crap that we're going to give you. Well, why don't you give like why don't you use it? Oh, we want more for you. No, you just don't want any part of it. They exclude themselves from this from this tax cuz they're not going to use a crappy insurance. Now, if they don't want to pay for the insurance and they want to get private insurance, great. But there shouldn't be a penalty, a tax, or whatever they call it, because so they they didn't really want to do that. They didn't want um, people to have this this individual freedom. They wanted the totalitarian mindset. Right. Right. Yeah. Complete. Completely. And if if Obama if Obama were willing to say. You know what? This healthcare is so good. I think I'm going to go on it myself. I would have a little bit more confidence, but you know, oh, we saying we want more for you guys isn't a, val- a valid answer. And then when you ask why you're excluded by taxes, you get uh um. Now let me be clear. Uh, um uh. Uh, well, folks, I have to jump on Air Force One now. I have to go play in my 624th round of golf. <laughs> exactly. That that's that isn't quite what that isn't quite what he says, but it might as well be. Um, it, it but it might as well be every time we ask him about Obamacare, and it, it just it drives me. Insane. Okay. Now, uh, any more comments from the peanut gallery? Uh, Zach just said, uh, what will unfortunately break Obamacare, sorry, what will ultimately break Obamacare is that people just can't afford the prices. Families have to choose between Obamacare and eating or paying the rent. And they're going to be taxed or penalized more if they make that distinction. I mean, it's it's their fault. They should be able to to have a better job. Well, you know, if they had a better job, we wouldn't be in this crisis in the first place. But it, it, we're not going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at elsewhere. We we can't be looking at the obvious. Um. So yeah, that's. I think I think we should just stop talking about it now. I have an, I have two stories that we can talk about. You want to hear about? Um, terrorism, or um, what I was talking to you about earlier today about my friend. Oh, let's go. Let's go on to your friend. I think. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more detail on Tuesday, but um, Sam said I could bring it up, and so I will. Um, so I have a friend. Now, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Before I say any of this, I'm going to say I love this friend dearly and I want the best for him and I know he wants the best for himself. (coughs) Here's the thing. I was talking to Sam earlier today and I said, Sam, I have over the past three, four, five, six, seven years, I've wanted to do many different things with my life. In seventh, sorry, in eighth grade, I wanted to be a science teacher. Well, then I realized in high school, me and science aren't really good friends. I suck at science. I I thought I wanted to be a history teacher, but I found out I don't like kids, so I probably shouldn't be a teacher. Um, I mean, I don't I don't hate kids. I just if if I'm teaching a fifth grade class, I'll probably, uh, you know, not go to work sometimes and just say, oh, I forgot. No. Um, but seriously, I I just don't think I could ever teach history. Then, um. I get to college and I want to do a radio TV thing and I'm debating on which one I'd rather do because I love radio, but I think TV would have a better option for me. Um, but you know what? I also thought about dropping out of school and going to Los Angeles, going to Dallas, going to New York. I also thought about dropping out of college and and working full time in two different places. I also thought about dropping out and doing this. And So as my friend, my friend when he was in high school wanted to do option A. Option A didn't really work out, so he said, I want to do option B. Well, option A and B both didn't work out, so he's going to try C. Well, maybe now A will work. You get, you get what I'm saying? He he goes from 
like from option one to two to three to four, which is what I did. But his problem is he lets everybody on social media know that. So after uh, a semester in college, he drops out and he wants to try and join the military. Well, then he wants to start going to the gym and do boxing and, and get in shape so he can go to the military. Well, then that doesn't work out because he finds out he, does, he doesn't have money, so he gets a job. Well, then he gets another job. Then he gets another job. Then he gets a, a, a – mil, a, not a military, a medical license, a very small one, but he can go to nursing homes and take care of the elderly and get paid for it fairly well. And he doesn't do anything with it. So we're working together, and he calls me up on Friday night, and he says, you know what's bull crap? And by the way, if he listens to this, I love you. But there's a big problem with your ideology. He calls me up and says, you know what's some bull crap? I can't work full time because I'll – and by the way, I haven't mentioned this – because I'll lose my food stamps. Now, him and his mom lived together. His, his dad ended up passing away right before he was born. Um, in the military, he fought in the Persian Persian Gulf Wars. So his mom and him live together. She is on disability. She has food stamps, Medicare, or sorry, Medicaid, and all that kind of stuff. So they're living off they're living off the government. So he's been working, and my boss is saying, "I want you to work more hours." My boss in this economy is saying, "I want you to work full time, five more hours a week, thirty five hours to 40 at least if my boss really wanted him which my boss does he wants him to work over 60 hours a week if he can think about that there are uh, sam can you do you know the the number of unemployment right now it's like what 14 percent if they're lucky yeah i mean it's it's a pretty huge number i think yeah. I think it was 14% the last time I backed. Yeah, let's let's say 10% for all for all argument's sake. 10% of this country is trying to find work. And this guy is practically being told, "I want you to work as much as you want." And he said, "I can't. I cannot work more than 35 hours a week because I'll lose my food stamps." Now, how much is he getting from food stamps? Let's say give or take $100. A month, so $25 a week, give or take. We're just doing round numbers here. It's actually quite a bit less. So, assuming he makes minimum wage, which he makes more. So, let's say minimum wage is $8, which is less than what he makes. 8, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Looks like he can work three more hours and get paid uh, just about as much as he needs every week. Three more hours, and he could pay for food stamps. But here's the thing. He doesn't want to pay for the food stamps. He doesn't want to pay for his food because the government does it for him. The government hmm. says, we'll give you $100 a month for you to do absolutely nothing, and we'll penalize you by taking away that $100 a month if you don't do it. Sam, this is the problem with America. This is the problem with, with our generation that we're trying to reach out to. We're trying to say, you guys are made for so much more, but you are, you are selling yourself short. Massively short. Because the government says, we will give you this, we'll give you that, we'll give you Obama phone, we'll give you free food, we'll give you free health care, which isn't any of it isn't free. None of it is free. But they see it as free because they aren't the ones that are going to work at 2 in the morning, working until 7 p.m., trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. And they just – there's no incentive for them to do it. If, if Okay, Sam. Let's say you work uh, 70 hours a week, minimum wage, trying to pay your rent. The government comes in and says – We'll give you just about as much money if you don't do anything. What would you personally do? Not no no political reasons, just ease for you. What would you do? Pro probably just out of ease. Probably just out of ease, like most people. I would say, okay. Um, you'd, you'd sit on your hands. 
yeah, but he, here's here's the big problem, and I think this is what you're allu- alluding to. I think that a lot of people, and it sounds to me like your friend wants you to do this stuff. He's just he's afraid of. And this is the whole thing. The, the government not only has created this dependency state, but they've also created this, this, this kind of fear state where if you go and work on your own, we won't give you, we won't give you your, your uh, you know, food stamps. If you don't have your food stamps, you won't be able to get, you won't be able to eat. If you don't eat, you'll die. Yeah. And, and, and that's the that's that's the whole argument that he has. I'm gonna die if I don't get this money. But dude, if you work five extra hours a week every single month, you'll be paid for well more than you will ever need. If you get paid five dollars an hour, five dollars an hour, and you work those extra five hours, guess what? That's your $25 you need for that week. I know some of that money is going to go for taxes for other people to not work. But he doesn't want to pay he doesn't want to, he does not want to pay for groceries because he's only 21 freaking years old. You got to grow up. You got to grow a pair and you got to get out and freaking do what you need to do. There is no way possible for me to sugarcoat this than to other say that otherwise say you got to get up off of your butt, which he has. You got to get to work and you got to pay. Or you, well, you, you got to get up a couple of extra hours. And you got to work real hard to get your twenty five dollars a month. Let's say it's fifty dollars a month. Put in an extra couple of hours here. Put in a couple of extra hours there. Get the job of which you were certified to do. But he's not going to do that because he's going to lose his food stamps. This is the yeah. kind of person that is a, is, is a huge majority of the youth population in America. This is a huge population of the group of people who voted Democratic this past election. Why? Because the Democrats are saying, we're going to give you more money. That's what they're saying. If a, if a sponsor came up to me and said, we're going to give you a ton of money for you to do nothing, I will stop my podcasting career if it's a good enough amount of money. If they say, we'll pay you $2,000 a week, or let's say something realistic. Let's say we'll pay you $2,000 a month to do absolutely nothing. <laughs> I'll say, hey, guys, I'm out. I'm getting paid two grand a month to do nothing. And that's 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 what they do. They get paid to do nothing. Barbara made a comment. It's one thing if he wasn't able to work, but this is another. Or, but when you can and you don't, that's what's wrong. His mother claims that she can't work. She can work. There are office jobs that she can go to. And I understand it might be hard for her to get there, but she can work at home. But yeah. no, it's, it's, it's the gimme, 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 gimme system that's going to bankrupt this country. Yeah, I'm gonna, and, I'm gonna go in a little bit more detail on Tuesday, but that's kind of like my little rant time right there. Awesome, and yeah, I mean, I I completely agree with you. What's What's really sad to me is it seems like, uh, it seems like from what I can tell, it seems as if uh, it seems as if to me, he already has like some motivation. Um, to go work hard. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He has motivation. He has a support system behind him, but he just won't do it because it'll end up costing him a couple extra bucks, a couple extra times. We raise our children to be independent. You're exactly right, Barbara. Every, I, I, I'm going to, again, I'm going to, this is a little tune in for Tuesday, but I wrote a paper and I said, when you ask a kid, Sam, I'll ask you this. When you were 10 years old. No, no. Right now. If you could be one thing in the world, what would it be? Um, the number one syndicated talk show host in America. Making a difference, yes? Mm-hmm. 
we are are fundamentally wanting to make a difference in this world. Sam wants to be a, a, a talk show host. When I was a kid, I wanted to be the fireman, the police officer. I wanted to be, you know, maybe a veterinarian. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to help people. I wanted to go out there and fight the good fight. But for some reason, when, what was that, Sam? When I when I was five years old, I, when I was five, I wanted to be Batman. Just thought I'd put that out there. But still, I wanted to go out there and help people. Yeah. Yeah, we want to... Exactly, Barbara. No one said, I want to be a freeloader. And that's the point. No kid ever says, oh yeah, I, I just want to do what is expected of me and barely survive. My pastor said today, you are made more. You are made for more than paying off your mortgage and putting off your funeral. We... We were made to do something in our life. We were made to be something that is greater than ourselves for any religious, political, ideological, philosophical idea behind you. Go for it. But do not be a freeloader who sells him or herself short for a few extra bucks from the government so you can sit on your hands and play Xbox or the PlayStation or on your computer. And do nothing for society. What? You want a nation changed. You want people to be able to 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 um, retire at sixty five, and for there to be money to, for them. Then you gotta work, and you gotta participate. Let's say I own a small business. Sam can choose between me or somebody else. The free market will determine if he if my prices are better or their quality is better. Or if my quality is better but their product is cheaper. He's going to pick from either a better product or a cheaper product depending on his economic standard. Oh, by the way, if he's getting paid more, he's most likely going to pay for a higher priced product meaning more tax in. And oh yeah, by the way, uh, side note, if uh, we get taxed less, we'll buy more stuff. Which means the government's still going to get our taxes through, for, through income tax. Look at that. Economics. Wonderful. Yep. Can we go on to uh, terrorism and ISIS? Sure. I'm kind of in a Mitch rat. <sighs> I'm kind of in a Mitch rat mood, so why not? All right. ISIS allegedly beheads American aid worker Peter Kassig. A video, this is by opposingviews.com, a video that was reportedly posted online by terrorist group ISIS seemingly no, uh, sorry, seemingly shows the beheading of Peter Kasig, an aid worker and former army ranger. Um, the clip was uploaded to various social media outlets early Sunday morning and features a terrorist dressed in all black, standing, uh, standing with what appears to be a severed head. The terrorist reportedly says that the head is Kasig's. Quote, this is Peter... Uh, I don't I don't have an Islamic accent. Um, Durka Durka. This is Peter Durka Durka. Edward Kasig. A U.S. citizen of your country. Oh, he's a U.S. citizen of our country? I thought he was a U.S. citizen of, of European countries. Uh, Peter, who fought against the Muslims in Iraq while serving as a soldier... Um, he continued, we say to you, Obama, you claim to have withdrawn from Iraq four years ago. Uh, the militant says, how are you? You have not withdrawn. Or sorry, here you are. You have not withdrawn. Rather, you hid some of your forces behind your proxies. Um, pretty much a saying, Durka Durka, we, you need to forfeit Durka 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 Durka. Um, Sam? How the heck are we supposed to fight ISIS? I have an idea. Bomb them. We, Every single one of them. Well, see, we, we we need we need an we need an actor. We need we need we need to get an actor who can uh, who can infiltrate the terrorists and act to find out what the terrorists are planning. Mm. Oh, what's what's his name in the movie? We're, by the way, if you don't know what we're referencing with Durka Durka and everything, it's Team America World, please. America! F yeah. 
F yeah. Uh, which is which is even though it's a comedy movie, it's surprisingly accurate. Um, but um, what, what we need to do, I've said this million, millions and millions of times, we need to, there's a, there's a really stupid rule that the CIA can no longer profile based on the fact that you're a Muslim. This is one of Obama's newest rules. Now, believe me, I'm not, I'm not, I know that people on our side of the fence get jumpy when I mention the CIA and the NSA, but for God's sake, I don't think the entire intelligence community is that bad. And allowing people to profile based on the fact that they're Muslim, let me ask you this. Who has committed the last five major terrorist attacks on U.S. soil? Who perpetrated the uh, Boston Marathon? Oh, that's right. Two Muslims did. Who did uh, Who did 9-11? Oh, that's right. Muslims. Um, now, that's not to say that all Muslims are bad. That's never been even the point. My point is we can't really even say that, um, that they're evil now. Um it just go to that link. Um, I just want to take a second and and listen to this song because uh, I think we should get this song prepped for every every show. But uh, I think we should just we sh- we should just listen to it and realize the fact that America is superior to every Durka uh country in the world. Um, because it it's true, it's just true. Um. So I I say in one word, um, my which by the way we can't fix this in one word, uh, but my idea is um, in one word, bomb. Sam, your one word to fix the uh, whole crisis. Just uh, one word. It's it's not uh, assassinate. It's assassinate. Yes, actually. Nice. Actually, if if I may, if I may have two words, Shit. it's and it's not our show. It's uh, Mitch Rap. Mm. Un- so, unfortunately, Mitch Rap isn't an actual person. But what I'm saying is, we need a Mitch Rap type character to basically go out and take care of all the terrorists covertly. Oh yeah. So I'm just gonna play this. Uh, if Sam joins, then he does. If not, he doesn't. But um. Not too important. Oh. America. America. Yeah. Come in again to see the motherfucking day. Yeah. America. Yeah. Freedom is the only way. Yeah. Terrorists, your game is through. Cause now you have to answer to America. Yeah. <laughs> That's the greatest. It's like <laughs> ten seconds of just bleeping. <laughs> but um, uh. so I think we've learned a couple things today. With uh, two minutes to go, two two and a half minutes to go, uh, we learned that um, we can that Sam knows some pretty amazing people to come on to our show, come on to his show, uh, including Mr. Michael Housem. Housem. That's how you pronounce his last name. And uh, we also learned that America is the greatest and that our American youth uh, sucks. But, and we've also learned that Next Gen Conservative is here to help try and inform the youth, but we've known that for a while. Just the, the way I see your segment, it's kind of a reminder of why we're here, almost. Why we're doing what we're doing. But uh, anyway, folks, we want to thank you. I want to thank you for uh, tuning in tonight and uh, listening to us. It was great to have you all here for us with the for the ride. Uh, thank you again to Mr. Michael Hausen for coming on the program, and uh, we'll be having updates regarding his radio show that's coming up um, this week or this month, I think. Um, you can follow us on Twitter as a whole, at NGC underscore media. 
check out our website at ngcmedia.net. And again, you can uh, follow me on Twitter at SamW underscore NGC. From all of us here at NGC One, have a good night. God bless and God save this great nation. Hey folks, Matt Dallas here. And right now, there is no better gift than a portable power bank from Octopod. A power bank is essentially a portable phone charger. Take it with you to football games, camping trips, school, or anywhere you want to keep your device powered where you're not going to be near an outlet. Octopod products make a great gift for anyone in your family. Visit octo-pod.com slash NGC. Once again, that is O-C-T-O-P-O-D dot com slash NGC to buy your power bank today.